Welcome back to Culture is an Inside Job, everyone. Well, Karen, well, Scott, what are we going to talk about today? We've got some, uh, always have, have some good conversations with each other. Before we were recording, we were like, why aren't we recording this? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Juicy. Mm -hmm. Well, there was 20, like 20 minutes of really, really good content. And I love listening to the both of you. Um, cause I think what I appreciate listening to you two about is you have some really valuable tools to help people. And uh, I'm real excited about learning about those tools myself. Yeah, we do have a couple of good tools today. Yeah, we do. And Scott, of course, we love and we all have stories, right? But what the gift that you really bring to is just being able to bring out real life examples um, and your willingness to, you know, be open and vulnerable about that. So thank you. Well, when you make a hot mess of your life, you just have oh, some great it's stories. Not, it's the transformation that I love, it, it, right? Like you, you, we all start somewhere, right? Like you, in our last episode, you said like, this was a reckoning. And the minute that I recognize that I have a choice, what would I want to do with that? Right? takes a long time to realize that we have a choice. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we have been talking about <clears throat> saboteurs, right? From a body of work called positive intelligence. If you haven't yet taken the saboteur assessment, we invite you to do that. Um, and in our last episode, we, we wrapped up talking about, well, what do we mean by victim? But we also promised, okay, we're not going to leave you hanging there. Like, what do we, what do we do? What do we do about it when these saboteurs are so loud, as I like to say? How do we, how do we quiet them? And I think one of the, again, reminder, um, and for those of you who have not heard any of these episodes and you're just jumping in, but first and foremost, the power of self-awareness. So us just being aware that, and really real with ourselves that, you know, but last time we talked about the victim and we're like, oh, it's really hard to admit that I ever go there. But you know what? It's true. And I do. And so that awareness in itself makes a huge difference. And then after that, it's, well, what do we want to do about it? Because we have choice. We can still keep doing the same thing over and over again, which, of course, if we're ex uh, expecting different results and we don't get them, you know, that's because that's that definition of insanity. Um or we can make the choice to move forward and take action in some way along with the aware awareness. And so there's a perspective that uh, Shirzad Shimin talks about in his book, The po uh, Positive Intelligence and that work, and it's called the sage perspective. And um, Karen, why don't you maybe describe what, what does he mean by that? Uh, and then we can dive into some of it, as he calls them, the five sage powers. So our sage or our essence, our truth with a capital T, our soul, you know, there's just different, you know, synonymous words that we can use to represent that deepest part of us that comes from a place of inner knowing with a capital K. And so one of the most important aspects here is building discernment, mm -hmm. right? So our first line of defense, as we've talked about, is that self-awareness. Once we become aware, then we can accept what we can and can't control. And that allows us to come at conscious choice. So the sage perspective is recognizing that all of these saboteurs play a part from a level of fear or judgment of ourselves or others or the situation. And if we wanted to get rid of that fear or judgment, then what would be left would be truth. Because as I say, fear and truth cannot coexist in the same space. Mm -hmm. Now they can dance together. And you have to walk through the fire to get to the other side, right? But still, that, that getting to that sage perspective is that, that truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are, five, there are five powers in that sage perspective. 
Karen, one thing that just came up for me, and I just, I wonder if it might help our listeners to like have a better understanding too. You did a beautiful job of describing it, but remember the Chinese parable that they talk about? Um, the stallion about story? story? Yeah. Share yeah. that. You, you share that better than I do. I will. I will. And it's, I, I'm not going to say it verbatim. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to high level. So I may not be saying this all word for word exactly, but so um, there was a farmer and he had a beautiful stallion and the stallion won uh, an award at like the fair or something because, you know, it was just such an amazing stallion. And the neighbors came up to the farmer and they said, they were congratulating him. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Congratulations. And the farmer said, who knows what is good and what is bad. And the next day, the uh, stallion got out of, you know, his fenced in area, what have you, got out. And the neighbors were like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's terrible. And the farmer said, who knows what is good and what is bad. And then the next day, the stallion comes back with a young a young horse with it and um and so now he had another horse and so of course the neighbors were congratulating him again and he's like who knows what is good and what is bad and so then his son decided i'm gonna break this horse so his son gets on on the horse and he's on the horse and all of a sudden he gets thrown off and he breaks his breaks his arm and again the neighbors are like oh my gosh it's terrible and the farmer's like, who knows what is good and what is bad? And finally, the Imperial Army comes in, and they're taking all the young men to go off to war. And they were going to take his son, but his son had broken his arm, and so he didn't have to go. And so at that point, the neighbors stopped asking the, or congratulating or, or what have you because they knew what his response was going to be. But back to what Karen was saying, it's like we judge situations and ourselves and other people you know so much but it is that whole point of you know who knows what is good and what is bad and it's trusting that and so these sage powers as karen uh, brought up are what we can kind of kick in right we all have these five things within us already but it's at different times depending on what we're facing um we can activate them, if you will. My headset's falling out of my hair. <laughs> you have a nice big bow in your hair now. Yeah. I love it. Well, so pretty. Hold on, I gotta fix this issue. <laughs> there you go. Okay. For those of you watching on YouTube, hello. Um, <laughs> anyhow, so, <laughs> um, but th so these five sage powers, and I'll mention them, and I'll 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 explain maybe when we need them when we can lean into them more. And then, Karen, we can determine what do we wanna do from here and how can we you sure. know, share more with our audience. So, so the first one is empathize. And we need this one when we have strong feelings um, that are involved in a situation and uh, our emotional reserves are running low. We can all connect with when we need that, right? Um, and then the next one is explore. And we need this one to disco discover more about what is going on before deciding or acting. And then innovate is the when the obvious or existing ideas don't suffice and we need to think outside the box. And then finally, uh, no, there's two more. And then navigate, we need to find alignment with deeper values, purpose, or meaning. And then finally, the last one is activate. And that's when we need to take action without the saboteur interference. So I'll just pause there and ask uh, Karen or Scott, I guess, just in general, what's coming up so far and where do we want to go with this? Yeah, so to piggyback off what you just gave us as great um, lead-ins for these five powers, I just kind of want to go a little deeper. Mm -hmm. Um not too deep, but just a little deeper. So when we look at empathy, empathizing, that is really truly being able to give that compassion to ourselves, to others, and to our situation. Yes. 
in exploring, it's the ability to be curious. You hear us as coaches talk ad nauseum about curiosity being your number one tool, the empowering questions. What are the empowering questions that you can give yourself when you're, when you're, when this, uh, saboteur showing up, what, you know, situation warrant, what, what are the empowering questions you can give to the situation that you find yourself in? What are the empowering questions that you can give to, you know, who else you might be in the situation with? Mm -hmm. Innovating. This is the ability to reframe. What's the new perspective, right? What, what do we get to create from this experience once we've, you know, been more empathetic and curious? Now what's coming up for us? What's emerging? Navigating, obviously using our core values as our guide and our, and our purpose as our North Star. What would they ha have to say about this? How do we, how do we, are, are you hearing Lola scratch her bed? I, I, I am like, <laughs> Lola. She's, she's wow. settled down now. Sorry Lola about that. Is, Lola is her puppy. This is her <laughs> Sorry for the distraction. <laughs> okay, keep going. Um, navigating our core values, right? And then being able to recognize that they play a part in this for us. And being able to take decisive action, right? Being able to activate with having that really strongly aligned perspective now mm -hmm. that is it's almost like a pattern empathize with yourself giving you know compassion be curious what are the questions that you want to ask what's the new perspective how do your values play a part in this and how do you take aligned action so while we can lean into any one of them at any given time, we can also utilize them as literally their own pathway. We always need to start with compassion. We then get to be curious. That's what allows us to co-create or create whatever that innovative opportunity is to go forward. I believe this is true, but in medical school, they teach doctors 48 minutes of pain. So if you think of medical school, that's, that's all they get is 40 minute, 48 minutes of understanding like pain in the human body. Now I'm not picking on doctors and I'm not picking on a medical school. What I'm, I think I'm making a point here. I'm 58 years old and I didn't learn anything about what we're talking about in any school, any environment around how, how to understand emotions, how to understand myself, how to deal with situations, how to deal with conflict in a healthy way. None of that. I had to, I, and I want to say this arrogantly, but like I had to find some of those tools on my own and what a crappy way, what a crappy way to live. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, so if you're younger, know that you've got two choices. One is you can pick up these tools, you can use them and have a beautiful, beautiful life, or you can shove them to the side and buy a helmet because you're going to need one. And if you get married, you should probably buy two helmets because <laughs> your wife or husband's going to need one too. <laughs> <laughs> That's such <laughs> profound advice. <laughs> well, and I, I mean, I love what you, you know, bringing up the younger people. I like, oh my gosh, I, the gift of being able to know this stuff when I was younger. Um, not that, you know, my life would not have been perfect. There is no such thing. But just being able to navigate through things that it took me until I was a little older. So hopefully, again, this can help anyone of any age. Um, and yeah, and I'm excited to dive into how do we kind of put these into action a little bit more and quiet some of those pesky saboteurs mm -hmm. that show up for us. Um, so maybe do we want to share, uh, some of what he calls the power games? Um, go for it. I'd put that into action. Okay. So when we talk about empathy, the, the first one that he does, that he, the first power game that he talks about is um, visualize the child. And so one thing I want to say as I talk about this, and I take this very seriously, there are people who are either on this call or, uh, or list our listeners who have been through a traumatic experience um, when they were a child. And so no matter whether you have or haven't, it's like, take care of yourself if you choose to do this, this exercise, because it does take thinking back and seeing yourself and visualizing yourself as a child. Now, what he wants us to do, what he invites us to do 
is visualize ourselves when we are at that age it's like pure essence right and we can just we can just visualize the light when we were that age as a child and and what and when we do that we can use this for again two things and karen said earlier right it's empathizing first and foremost with ourselves because most of us are honestly probably better at empathizing with others than we are ourselves we don't give ourselves enough grace and so in this visualizing a child and i actually have a physical picture of me when i was two or three years old sitting in a little rocking chair pretending to read a book i'm sure because i don't think i could read that a young um but it was that it reminds me of that little girl is still within me right that creativity is still there that joy is still there that fun is still there and so when i can do that i can give myself more grace i can step back and i can rem remind myself that she didn't go away i mean i got a little bit taller not much i'm only five one <laughs> but but that little girl is still within me and so it does help me to empathize with myself more the other thing that we can use this power game as he calls it for is with another person so most of us have already either personally or professionally been in a situation where we have somebody in our life um, who is we find difficult to communicate with or to work with or whatever it might be all and of the above yeah right exactly <laughs> and all of the above and when we can step back and we can literally and i have used this tool by the way in my professional life but when we can step back and when we can look at that person and see them as their inner child and remember that what's showing up for them is not yes there are some people right that maybe maybe they just want to be a jerk but i completely believe that most people want to be good most people are good when we see those icky things coming out or when we're having a difficulty, you know, we could also possibly be judging, making assumptions, but we're able to look at that person as, okay, this isn't what's coming out right now or what I'm feeling isn't who they are at their core. It's, it's that, it's the stuff like that maybe they haven't dealt with, but that little girl or that little boy is still inside of them and when i can look at them as a child oh my gosh it just shifts the way that i'm able to see them to communicate with them to love them and so so that's that's what, what we talk about that's what we're talking about when we say the power game of visualizing the child scott and karen what comes up for you around that one i just want to add the when we look at empathy and Brene Brown has a wonderful video that you can uh, check out on empathy versus sympathy. But the point here is that it's the uncon unconditional love, right? It's when we are empathizing, we are not needing anything back. It's just our ability to really fully understand and embrace what that experience is for someone else. Mm -hmm. Scott. Is that the part of explore? Am I? This is empathy. Yeah. Gotcha. So. Yeah. It no, allows I... you to explore when Correct. you're able to be empathetic. That's what gives you that opportunity then to go into exploring and be curious. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. No, I think it's a really cool exercise. I mean, we just get so caught up in the moment. Mm -hmm. And you said this before. I mean, sometimes there's wounds that people have when they're young. They're, I mean, they're deep. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time they're buried so deep. <laughs> mm -hmm. But like we talked on the last episode too, is that sometimes those actions like protect the, those little kids. And so they're just pulling out the tool that they had when they were four or five. Protect maybe, you know, things that other people did to them. And uh, when you can look at them differently, that is, well, like you say, that's empathetic. That's humanity at its finest hour. 
Yeah. And, and that's, that's why, you know, yes, this work can be so helpful and is so helpful in coaching and so forth. There's, you know, there's a real space for therapy, Mm -hmm. right? And if there are those deep wounds, like reaching back and getting help in that way in order to be able to even get to this point, because some, there are some people who aren't even ready to do this piece and that's okay. Um, okay. So that is empathize. Explore. Karen, do you want to talk about the, the power game of fascinated anthropologist? So sure. Um, being able to observe what is. This goes back to, you know, seeing that discernment, right? Not try, recognizing that we all come through the lens of judging. And you just said the word humanity at its best, right? This is it. This is it. Being that anthropologist is b being able to recognize everything, f discovering what, without any filter, what's no the truth, right? No judgment. And so exploring is that space of curiosity. So what's the different perspective? What does this show me? What did I not know? What do I get to see differently? What, um, what, where is this coming from? I look, I sometimes will help clients by using the visual of a triangle with my hands. And then this is, you know, we have our head and we have our heart and we have our gut and how we think and how we feel and how we act. And when they're, when we can leverage the strength of all of them, then we can move perpetually forward, like more of a circle, rather than just being a stuck triangle with maybe lopsided sides. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we had talked about before was oftentimes when we're very heady, we think we're analyzing, we're, we're constantly, uh, trying to leverage the strength of our brain because that's how we know. But if we were to drop down into our heart and think, well, what, what didn't I know about this? Again, staying very curious, exploring, what does my heart have to say about this? What is that? What is my body sensing right now? So having all of that data is really important. Mm -hmm. Wendy, this goes back to space and grace. Right, the ability to give yourself the space, not just physical space, but the mental space mm -hmm. to then give yourself that compassion and be curious to see what, what don't I know yet? What do I need to know? What's emerging that is truth? And what does that inform me of for going forward? That's right. And we're able to, when we're able to do that for ourselves, first and foremost, then we're able to do that for and with other people as well. Yeah. What's the empowering question, mm -hmm. right? Scott, anything come up for you on this one? <clears throat> no, I was with Annie Lamian the other day and he said, here's the problem with stupid people is they drag you down to their level and then beat you up with experience. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm listening to the two of you and just, you're, you just, you just have a lot of knowledge and a lot of tools. So I am just, I am going to listen. And, and you have so much knowledge that we don't have. Yeah. So, so let's just be real. Well, thank you, Scott. It's good stuff. Um, and then Scott, I think what I'd like to do after Karen and I just described these next few at the end of that, maybe you thinking about how do you envision from a, a leader perspective, um, a company perspective, right? being able, what, what's the impact of activating these and stepping into these sage powers? So maybe thinking about that. So the next one is innovate. And again, this is when we need to think of a new way to approach a situation. Um, <clears throat> and so all, most of us, if not all of us, right, can get stuck in the well, that's the way that we used to do it, or that's a dumb idea. And again, let's think about ourselves first, not just with other people. Even when we're coming up with our own ideas, we're doing this to ourselves. 
And so there's a power game that he calls the yes and. And in this, and many of you may have heard of this in different renditions, but in this one, and let's just start thinking about like if we have ideas on our own and we're having this conversation with ourselves. And so we follow every new idea that we have with yes, what I love about that idea is, and, and then we add to it, versus the word what. But. But, right? <laughs> so many of us say but instead of and. And what it does is it, it shuts people down because they think, well, obviously you just said but, so you must not think that idea is good, your idea is better. But when you use the word and, in those kinds of situations, it adds to, and it helps us to, and again, let's talk for, about ourselves first. We are honoring ourselves. We are honoring that we are able to come up with new ideas and that we don't have all dumb ideas. And so it's, the, it's that thought that there are no dumb ideas. And it's, yes, what I love about that is you're picking that out and then, and, and adding to it. And then again, we can do this with Anybody else, teams, right? Even at home, where we're really intently listening to what they said, telling what we love about it, and then we're adding to it. Karen, what else would you add? No, I just, I mean, I love the yes and. Mm -hmm. You can use it everywhere. Anytime you have a but, think about how you could replace it with a and. We got and, and really give yourself permission to, to, you know, even those when your first, you know, perception of somebody's dumb idea is, oh my God, that's really the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But if you could find 1% of, of something that might be useful yeah, or that you can recognize again, if you're coming from that visualizing them as a child perspective they every idea is a valid idea there's some validity to it so finding that one percent of validity allows you to to be more innovative yeah and just we are hearing other people and we are honoring ourselves when we do that mm -hmm. okay what about navigate karen you want to talk about that yeah, so the, the, the power game here is the flash forward, which is imagining yourself at the end of your life, looking back, thinking about what choices that, you know, you have made and thinking what maybe you would have chosen to be different. I like to add in this with, again, our values, because of course values are my thing, but the ability to recognize how do my values play a part of me navigating this? And if they are, these are my core values, they should stay with me forever. So maybe even building a decision-making rubric, so to speak, with your values and thinking, you know, is this aligned? Is this value aligned? Will this value be aligned, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now? Being able to have a, a strong barometer along the way to navigate with, right? It's like your, it's your, it's your uh, compass. It's your, what else you might use to navigate with, right? Your GPS, mm -hmm. your ways. <laughs> your ways. That's W-A-Y-Z. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the part about this that really makes me step back and go, oh boy, is when it is like you're thinking about when I'm at the end of my life, which, what do I hope that I, which path do I wish, oh my gosh, I can't even talk, which path do I wish I would have taken, right? And what really, I guess what else comes up for me around that is what, what really mattered. So that's really helpful to me as I'm moving through that too. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the last one is activate. And so in activate, um, this one is 
where we have the opportunity to what he calls preempt the saboteurs. And what he means by that is, like, we know, especially our top saboteurs, we know what they sound like. We know what our inner critic sounds like. We know what the gremlin sounds like, what, however you describe it. And at the same time, we probably don't often enough when we go into especially stressful situations, step back and say, okay, how is this going to show, how is this little inner critic or this saboteur going to be showing up for me today? What is the, what is it going to be trying to tell me? Because it's really trying to protect me. But honestly, it's, you know, it's holding me back. And so when we preempt the saboteurs, we're already going into something thinking, okay, now I know that my pleaser is going to show up really loudly because I'm going to be worried about what does everybody think or are, is somebody going to be mad at me or, you know, what have you. And then, because that's all the little T truth, my little T truth that I believe is not really true capital T truth. So I have to step back and say, how true is that really? Karen, what else would you add? <clears throat> um, yeah, no, I love that. And I think that it's probably a perfect segue to consider how we help the intercepting of, you know, once to, mm -hmm. in, instead of getting hijacked, that we can intercept them yeah. using some of these tools, as well as uh, a few others that we, that we may be aware of. So, but before that, let me ask Scott, what any of these showing up for you in a specific way where as a leader, <clears throat> you could see that there could be some usefulness. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think a couple of things. And when you said this, like, do we really know, well, do we know how these are impacting our lives? And like, if we don't take the assessment and we don't have true tellers around us, we don't even know that the shenanigans that we're kind of causing. Um, and if that's not important to you, then that's okay. It's your life, you know, but if it is important to you, then you can lean into this and it can be, um, it can be different for you. And I, and Wendy kind of understands like the learning circle, which is some of the things we did inside of MB. And it kind of reminds me of that is <clears throat> in my example, I spend way too much stuff observing, reflecting, and discussing the things that happen during the day in my own head mm. and it's my story it's my observation it's my reflection and then it's my discussion on how things could have been different <clears throat> and it never ends well if i stay on my side but when i get it into somebody else's ear and i get it into someone else's mind and i'm sharing that <clears throat> and i feel safe and having that conversation um inside of that conversation can be some sort of form of accountability, a recommendation. Here's a different idea. Here's a different approach. And then on the heels of that, there's action. So what action are you going to take? And then what I've learned in that experience is normally the outcome is a lot better than your initial thought. And if you're on a quest for just better outcomes, right? Greater peace of mind, more freedom in your life, you know, where I don't have to worry about I, I talk a lot here about I me. Mean, you ever walk through the building and not wanting to go through one area because I don't want to see so and so. <clears throat> but when we live a life when all those messes are cleaned up, we have complete freedom. We can walk around. Now they might look at us and still have the same opinion. But if you're strong enough, it's like I don't care. Your opinion of me doesn't really matter that much to me as much as it did. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So good stuff. Yeah. And I, you just basically walked through compassion, curiosity, and creativity. And then I think the last thing is, you ever heard the phrase, two sickies don't make a welly? Mm -hmm. What I love about that is sometimes if you're healthy, you're going to talk to a really sick person. And the gift of that and discernment is potentially my well advice is not going to help the sickie. I'm going to go another direction. And it's that discernment, or I can be helpful, or I can be useful. The beautiful thing about it is now you get to pick and choose who you're going to help. And you get to pull away from who you're not going to help. And that is, that's going to save, in my opinion, people lots of time. The thing I wrote down, too, is 
first of all, Scott, what comes up for me when you just said that last statement is the reminder that, again, starting with self, because we all think we want to save the world and we want to help everybody else. And, you know, we're so focused on other people. And if we don't start with us again, right, the rest, the rest won't come. We won't be able to show up with our, as our best self and make the biggest impact. The thing that I wrote down too, as a reminder is we all have these sage powers. We have, you heard them like they're, they're normal everyday things. We just don't allow ourselves to, I'll just use the word, unleash them enough. And so this just gives you the opportunity on how to go about doing that. Um, but yeah, Karen, jump into some of the things that we can do. We were talking about this before we hopped on. Again, Karen and I went through this program and it was really helpful, I think, for both of us. And it's probably a great reminder for us that, oh yeah, we do have this tool we can keep coming back to. But dive into some of those physical aspects, right? Whole body aspects that helps us. Yeah. So for our fellow coaches out there that have gone through this and remember, we called it the PQ gym. And so we would go in and do our little exercises regularly just to build our muscles. Um, and a couple of different uh, exercises <clears throat> basically are when you start to recognize that you have a saboteur and if it's maybe even preempting the saboteur, but even if it's that you start to feel as you might recognize it in your body, whether it's in your heart or, you know, your, your throat might start closing up. Or maybe your, your gut starts to feel a little like queasy or butterflies. Or maybe you've got a brain twi twitch. Something's happening when you're recognizing that you're uncomfortable. The ick has started to set in. Um, one thing for us to kind of come back to center so that we are not getting full on hijacked is to find a way to intercept this saboteur, these saboteurs. So if you could just put your fingers together and feel your fingerprints and just rub your, rub your fingers together, this kind of brings you back to the present moment. Take your one hand and, and rub on the other palm and just feel the different, the way that your, your, the lines in your hand move. And that gives you a sense of groundedness. It resets our nervous system. Mm -hmm. Yep. It really does. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not even in a stressed state and doing this now kind of eases it. A, a, there's like a no more anxiety in the belly kind of feeling, right? Uh, another option would be to take a visual approach and that would be to look out to the furthest thing that you could possibly see and just reflect, observe. Hmm, what is that? And then come back and think, what is the closest thing that I can see as my eyes cross when I look at my <laughs> microphone in my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> so again, bringing us back to center, recognizing that we are, we are, there is a thought that is coming from a place of judgment or fear and that we can discern where is their truth? How do I empathize with myself, being compassionate? What are the what are the, um, this, this allows us to go into the sage perspective. How do I become more curious and exploring? It's a new way to look at this. Where are my core values in all of this? How do I take aligned action? Um, and one of the other ways is from an audio perspective to listen and think, what can I hear is the furthest thing away and spend a few, few seconds there. And then what's the closest thing that I can hear? So again, this is that intercepting where I'm not getting, I'm not having to go into that thought and become attached to the story that ruminates now and it, and it becomes the truth. And now it's the bigger than, you know, bigger than me story. And so now I'm going to start, you know, acting based on that story and now everything falls apart because i'm all caught up in my story now when we can take a deep breath 
and we can utilize some of these PQ reps, we do not need to be hijacked. That allows us to take a few conscious moments before we are going to take action into what, what would I want with this? What would I, what, what, what's serving me about this thought, right? Karen, I, I want to come back to that because that's, I think, such an important critical piece of what we're talking about is our thoughts. So whenever, and, the, and we'll leave it with this um, and then kind of jump into just see how Scott wants to wrap up, but um, whenever our saboteurs are showing up very loudly, it's remembering that they are starting because of those thoughts. And so it's coming back and asking ourselves, what am I thinking right now? And then therefore, what's another way to think about it? What's another perspective? Which will quiet the saboteurs, which of course then shifts our emotions, which shifts our actions and our results. So thank you for that reminder. <clears throat> really important. Scott? <clears throat> yeah, fascinating. I think for anybody that would be listening, <clears throat> the ability for a leader to get quiet <clears throat> might be the most important thing for him or her to be able to do. And you can get quiet in a rage, in a raging argument. But if, if you don't have the ability to kind of, because when you get quiet, what you're going to do is you're going to reflect on your own values, what's important to you. And how is the next decision going to, how am I going to move forward, keeping my values in check? Because for me, my own life, <clears throat> I can't live with resentments. So if I act inappropriately, then I got to come up and I got to clean up that mess tomorrow. <clears throat> I don't know how that mess impacted you or the rest of the people around you. And life gets really wonky and really complicated. But what I loved about the, the tools that you guys were walking through is, <clears throat> like you had said, when I, like I rub my, my fingerprints, that resets my nervous system. And as you began to say, if I looked out the window, it resets like visually what I'm seeing. So instead of maybe looking at, and I'm just going to say, Karen, if you and I were in an argument, instead of looking at you, potentially if I looked away, maybe it is now I'm going to look at your inner child. So it's different. Mm -hmm. And if I was r r willing to hear things differently, <clears throat> but I, what I loved about that is it's the reset because if we don't reset, then insanity shows up. We do the same thing over and over again. And we're like, well, oh, why did that so end so badly? <laughs> like, because everything you do starts with the same solution. Every, every problem is a hammer. And the only tool you have in your hand is a hammer. And it's just not going to end well for, uh, for anybody. So that nervous system reset, that visual reset, that auditory reset. And I, I think for most importantly for me, when I get quiet, I actually close my eyes. Mm -hmm. And I think where that reset is, it resets my heart. So I'll just like close my eyes. Um, and I, I'll be in meetings sometimes and people are like, hey, you're really quiet. I'm like, I, I, if I have something to say, I'll, like I'll say it. But you're not saying much. Well, that's, that's probably a really good thing because that means everything you guys are saying is wonderful. And does, it, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just reset, get quiet. Um, great, 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 great. I learned something today. So thanks for teaching me. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for all of your ads. And and I think too, the bottom line is, you know, remembering we get to come from a place a, from a place of choice. Mm -hmm. So if we ask the question, you know, we say, let's go inside. Perhaps it's which one of these sage powers are important for you to activate, are important for you to lean into in order to quiet your saboteurs. Anything else? And I was just going to say to our listeners, don't beat yourself up that you realize you get hijacked, mm. right? It happens. It happens to us all the time. Even for those of us who have self-proclaimed self-awareness, right? But that doesn't mean that you don't get to, now let's, let's use this word responsibility because when we say the word responsibility, it might have some shame or guilt in it. And that's not, that's not the point. It's the ability to respond. Mm -hmm. So that is no shame, no guilt. What do I now know that I didn't before? 
and what might I want to do now differently? Yeah, that's the gift right there. Not beating ourselves up. I love that. Thank you. And with that, we will see you all next time. Thanks for being great teachers. Have a great day. Thanks for giving us opportunities to learn as well. Yep. Have a great day.